Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at the Arduino and in particular the ESP32, but this should be general to any Arduino that supports um, Wi Fi or Ethernet. And what we'll be doing is we'll be doing remote login. Um, this is particularly useful if your device is embedded and you can't easily connect a serial cable to it. So in the coding session, we're going to be sending messages to a remote logging service using UDP. We're going to be formatting the messages to indicate a log level and a source. We're going to add support for printf to our logger so we can do formatted printing. And we're going to change the color of the log messages to highlight if they are errors, warnings, or just general debug information. Um, it's quite a long coding session, um, so I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you do, please um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's a great way to get notified when we publish new videos. So uh, into the coding session. So I've started up the Arduino IDE and written a a very basic sketch that will print something to the serial monitor. So let's um, let's run that and check that we actually get some output. So there we go, we're getting some output from the serial monitor every time our loop executes. Now what I want to do is have this logging going out to a central server so when I deploy my hardware and I can't easily connect to it I can still easily see what it's doing and how it's performing. Now my go-to logging system is something called Paper Trail. So this is what I use when I'm building production systems uh, normally for server-side applications. So let's create an account on Paper Trail. So I'll just quickly create a temporary test account. So that's our Paper Trail account created. Um, let's add a system to Paper Trail. So what you can see is it supports various different types of logging. So you can say, I want to have a system log from anywhere. And uh, you can see it has all these integrations. Now obviously there's no integration with Arduino. So what we're going to do is integrate at quite a low level. And to do that, all you have to do is send a UDP packet to this host and this port. So I think the first thing we'll do is um, get Wi-Fi up and running on our Arduino system and we'll just try sending a UDP message to this endpoint and see what happens. So let's get, um, get Wi-Fi up and running. So Obviously we need some includes, so let's uh, bring in Arduino and we'll bring in the Wi-Fi header and we'll also need Wi-Fi UDP. So let's do the usual um, setup for getting Wi-Fi up and running. So so that should be our connection to Wi-Fi done. Now let's try just sending a UDP message 
to our paper trail system and see if it comes out. So to send a UDP packet, we need a Wi-Fi UDP class. So let's create uh, one of those. So and now to send an actual message. We just need to send a buffer to the uh, remote server. So we do Wi Fi UDP begin packet. And for this, we need to specify the host and the port number. That's our paper trail host and our paper trail port number. And then we just write a string. And then we end the packet and that should send that message off to paper trail. So let's give that a quick go and see if we actually get any messages coming through. So we'll upload it. Um, so I've spelt file wrong, so <coughs> let's fix some of our typos. Ah, so I've forgotten to create my Wi-Fi credentials, so I'll quickly put those into a separate file. So I'll create two hash defines for the SSID and the password. And now back in our main code, I'll just replace these with those two hash defines. So there's a few casting issues. The Wi-Fi UDP write expects to have a uint8 star. So we'll just do a quick cast to that because chars can be cast directly to um, uint8. Now fingers crossed well, that should be all of our compilation errors and hopefully this will now run. So we've got our code running and it's logging message to the serial port. Let's have a look on paper trail and see if we've actually got anything coming through. So if we see on our paper trail dashboard, it's found a system. So if we click on this system, then we can now see we're getting some messages coming in. Now, obviously this isn't ideal. All we have is an IP address and a thing that says logger. So that's not really what we want. We also can't really see the severity of our messages. So at the moment, paper trail is defaulting to emergency for all of our log messages. So ideally, we'd want to show things like debug, warning, notice, info, so that we can categorize our messages depending on how urgent they are. Uh, currently, everything's an emergency which is not really what we want. So, um, so let's, uh, let's fix that by uh, putting out this logging process into a separate logger class, and then we can actually start making use of some of the more interesting features of paper trail. So the way paper trail works is you can send it just a raw message but the ideal thing to send paper trail is what's called a syslog message. So if we look at um, the Wikipedia page on syslog, then you can see that it's a standard for message logging. Um, now it's quite a strange um, standard. So you have what they call facility levels, so if, uh, sorry, facility codes, 
which kind of indicate what system is doing the logging, and you have severity levels. Um, now, seven levels of logging is probably more than we actually need, so I'll probably just do error, warning, notice, info, and debug as the um, most we actually need. Uh, even that may be slightly over the top. So let's construct a syslog message to send off to paper trail. So if we look at the RFC for syslog, then we can see what the message should look like. Uh, now this can be slightly hard to read. So what it basically says is a syslog message consists of a header, a space character, some structured data, another space character, and a message. And the header consists of a priority, a version, a space, a timestamp, a space, a host name, space, app name, space, proc ID, space, and a message ID. And our priority is made up of angle brackets, a priority value, and closing angle brackets. Um, now most of these fields are actually optional, so you can use what they describe as the nil value. So if we look in here again, we can see we have a symbol called nil value, and if we scroll down we see that that is just a dash. So let's, um, let's build up one of these messages and see how it works. Now the try value is slightly weird as well, so if we search for this and see how we're supposed to construct it, then we can see that somewhere in the documentation, yeah here we go, the priority value is calculated by mul multiplying the facility number by 8 and then adding the numerical value of the severity. So basically to translate that into slightly more English, we'll take one of these facility codes, so I'm just going to use 16, which is for local use, we'll multiply that by 8, and then we add on our severity level. So let's, um, let's pull this out to a function for now. So we'll have our log function. And that will just take a, a message for now. And what we'll do is we'll send a packet off to paper trail and we'll construct one of these RFC syslog messages. So what do we need then? So according to this, for our header, We're going to need our priority, so let's construct that. So we'll have an open angle bracket, then we need 16 times 8 plus our log level. So actually, let's um, while we're here, let's create an enum for our log level. So going back to the documentation, our log levels are these ones, so we'll just do these last set of log messages. So, so error is three, warning is four, make info slightly shorter so we don't have to do so much typing. That's our nice log level enum. So let's add that as an argument. And we'll put it at the, that doesn't really matter, we'll just put it here. So now we can construct our prior value, which will be our facility code, which I'm just gonna use 16 
let's uh, let's pull that out as well. Plus our log level. And then a closing angle bracket and a space. So that's this done. Uh, actually, our version just belongs there. We we'll just say version one, and then there's a space uh, timestamp. We can omit that because we'll let Paper Trail deal with that. Um, and then the space, and then it wants what it calls the host name. Now, I'm actually going to use this as our identifier. So let's add another parameter, and we'll just call this. Um, Let's call it system. And then we have a, another space, and we have what they call app name. So you may not have one, um, but let's pass one in. So let's just call this, call this context. So potentially we could have log messages from different parts of the application. So let's put that in. And then we need another space. And proc ID we don't have, so we'll just do a dash for that. And then there's a space and a message ID. We don't really have a message ID. So let's go back and check what else we should have. So we've done, we've done the header now. So that's our header. So after the header, there's a space, and then there's structured data. We don't really have any structured data. Um, there is a, a format for specifying name value pairs in this structured data. Uh, feel free to read the RFC if you're interested in that. Um, I've lost track of how many dashes I need. So we've got the, let's move this over so I can see both. So we have our, Priority, version, space, timestamp, space, host name, space, app name, space, proc ID, space, message ID, space, structured data. So then we just need our message on the end. So that should be a syslog message that Paper Trail will understand. So now let's um, pull out our C string. And now in our loop, we should be able to log with different levels. So let's try that. So we'll do the log, log level, let's try an error. We'll call our system and we'll save in the loop. This is the error. Just copy these so I don't have to keep scrolling it up and down. So let's do a, a warning. Notice info and a debug. So so that should hopefully log five different messages to Paper Trail with the correct logging level. Let's see what um, actually comes out. So, doesn't like my code. I think I've just forgotten how to uh, do enums. One of the slightly frustrating things with the Arduino IDE is that it doesn't do very good autocomplete. So when you're building a large application, can be quite difficult. So 
we have a problem with let's see so we have a lot of problems so that's the first one so it's complaining invalid use of non-static member function ah. That needs to be length with brackets, so let's see if that fixes that error. Getting closer, so it still seems to have a lot of errors. So I think it doesn't like my const strings. So Let's just remove these and come back to that later. Okay, so it looks like that is all of our errors. Let's push this to the device and we'll see what comes out. Okay, so you can see in our serial monitor we're up and running again. Let's have a look on paper trail and see if we're getting some messages through that are now tagged correctly. So if we go back to our dashboard, you can now see we have a new system called paper trail test. So no longer getting an IP address, we actually get the name of the system that's doing the logging. And if we click through, we can see we now have these nice coloured labels to tell us what the actual message is, so error, warning, notice, info, debug. Um, so that's looking, looking pretty cool. Um, we now have logging going from our device out to the internet to this centralised logging system. So back in the code, um, it would be quite nice if our logging system supported things like print line and printf then we could do similar logging to this, but out to the internet. Now, what you can do is, I've had a look at the implementation of Serial, so let me bring in some code. So what you can see is if we trace through the definition of Serial, you can see that it implements this class called Stream, and if you dig into Stream, you can see it implements this class called print. And then if we look on print, we can actually see all the methods we actually need, print line and printf. And the only method we actually need to implement is this write method that takes a single character. So what we can do is we can also implement the print class, override this method, and then we have all of these nice print functions on our own class. So going back to our code, let's, um, let's turn what we've got here into a class. So let's do a logger class. And let's start um, building this in a slightly more OO way. So actually let's call it uh, paper trail logger to make sure we're clear what we're actually doing. Um, and while we're here, we'll, uh, we'll implement the print class. So we need a constructor. So let's take in Actually, let's, let's pull out these two parameters. So we'll have a, a host and a port. Let's copy across these initialization parameters. And I think we should also probably wrap up the Wi-Fi UDP into our class as well. So let's have that as a private member variable and we'll construct it as part of our logging construction. Now, I think I'm going to move the log level, the context, 
and the system name into this constructor as well. So what I'm thinking is we could have a separate logger for each type of message we want to log. So let's do that as well. So we'll copy these things into our constructor as well. And we'll make these private member variables. So that's copied across all of these values. And now we just need to implement that write method from print. And hopefully, if we've done it correctly, we should be able to log messages. So it's an interesting thing with this write method. So it takes one character at a time. So what I'm going to do is just create a buffer to buffer up the characters as they come in. And then we'll write them out when there's a new line. So let's create a buffer. Um, I'm not really sure how big to make this. So let's, um, let's assume we're not going to be logging huge messages. Um, I think uh, if we are, maybe that's a sign we're doing something wrong. And we'll just have an int to keep track of where we are in our buffer to check we don't overrun. And we'll initialize that in our constructor to zero. So let's, uh, let's write this um, write method. So the method signature was size t write. That takes a uint 8 and accepts a single character. So what do we need to do? I think we should probably detect the end of a line. So if we get a line feed, and I think we probably need to check if we run out of space or if we're running out of space. So let's so say if we hit 199 characters, then we're going to run out of space. Actually, let's put that into a, um, into a constant as well. So then that will be buffer size minus one. Um, so we're going to send the contents of our buffer off to paper trail. Um, so let's make sure our buffer is null terminated so we don't run off the end. So just write a zero into the last buffer position. Now we can construct our syslog message to send off to paper trail. So let's copy this. And what do we want to do? So we're going to begin a packet to our host and our port. The actual syslog message um, facility we can just keep with our hard coded value. The level will now be the level that our logger was constructed with. Uh, system is now M system and context, and this will be M buffer. We may need to wrap that in a string so that the addition works. So then we just need to write and then end our packet. Um, uh, if we're just buffering up characters, then we just need to store this new character in our buffer and increment the buffer position. So that should be our paper trail logger done. Let's just compile to check for any syntax errors. So we already have some problems. Doesn't like this. So let's see what we've done wrong. You went. I've typed that wrong. I think that might be the uh, source of all of our errors. So what's our next problem? It's a constructor with no type. Okay, I've been mixing up my JavaScript with my C++, so that should fix that problem. Okay, what's next? 
So we should have an awful lot of errors. So we're missing a semicolon. Uh, Wi-Fi UDP was not declared in scope. Uh, that's because I called it called it M Wi-Fi UDP. So let's just change all of these so they're correct. I think. So here we have the problem with trying to concatenate uh, a normal string onto the end of this. So let's just wrap this in a string. And then we'll try and compile again. Okay, almost there. I've just uh, left in my old code so we can delete that. And now Let's use, let's create our actual loggers. So we have our logging class. So let's do an error log. So let's um, copy this so I don't keep having to scroll up and down. So that's error info we've done. We'll do a warning. Notice and debug. And then in our setup, we'll just create those. So copy these. So new paper trail logger, and we take the host and the port log level, the system, and the context. So let's construct these. So our host is our paper trail host, um, which of course I've deleted. So let's go back to paper trail, go to our dashboard, and let's just check what our host and port are supposed to be. So here's our host. port and this is the error log so it's going to be log level error and our system we call it paper trail test So that's our error log. Let's create the rest of them. So warning, notice, debug, info. And now in our loop, we should be able to use these individual loggers with a print line. So let's change this to a uh, to infos and we'll do these for the different levels. So let's do a error log, a warning log, a notice log, debug log, and an info log. Now we'll just make these messages different so we can see them. So let's see if this compiles and runs. So I have some errors. Um, so what's our first error? Lots of errors. So it doesn't like using mhost for the port, so that needs to be C string. So let's try that, see what errors we get. Okay, so it doesn't like using uint8 to construct our string.
string. So let's do a quick cast just to make that work. And we'll compile that again. So here it's complaining about me specifying a string for the port number, which should be a number. And I think we're getting pretty close. Hopefully this should be the last couple of compilation errors. Okay, so let's run this and see if it works and sends messages to paper trail. Okay, so we're up and running. There's no logging coming out from our loop because it should now be going to paper trail. So let's check and see if our log messages are coming through. So, no sign of any messages yet. Um, which is because I've slightly mistyped the system name. So, I think in my first test, I missed out the R. So now we have a new system. So, let's see if the logs are coming through. And there we go. So, I can see one thing that's missing is I seem to be missing a carriage return in my logs. So let's see what we've done wrong here. So I think what's happening is we're not picking up the carriage return. So we're just hitting the end of our buffer and then logging. So that's kind of curious because we should be getting a carriage return. So I'm going to try and debug this and see what's going on. Ah, I can see the problem immediately. We're not resetting our buffer position. So once we've actually sent a message, we should set our buffer position back to zero, so we start a new message. So let's fix that and upload it and see if it works. Okay, so looking on the paper trail, we can see that our messages are now working properly. So we should have rebooted. Now you can see we are looping up and we have the correct messages coming through and they're tagged with the correct severity level. Um, now the last thing I want to do is have it so the messages still come out in the serial monitor and I'd also like to make it a bit clearer the different levels of messaging. So one thing you can do in paper trail is you can colour messages using ANSI colour codes. So these are kind of escape codes that you can send that will instruct some systems to change the colours of your text. Now it's a bit of a shame that the Arduino serial terminal doesn't support these codes, so we can only get black and white coming out in here. Uh, but if you connect using PuTTY or some other terminal system, then you will get colours in your logs. But let's quickly fix some of the issues. So we need to also send our messages to the serial port. So we'll just do a serial print line and send n buffer. And then let's have some colours as well. So I think we'll just pass those in to the constructor. So we'll have a colour. then in here we can just add our colour escape code just before our message. So let's put in some colours into our constructors. So I think we'll have, let's have red for error. So I put the colour just after the log level. 
So we need to include a escape sequence and then the color. So let's do that for all three of our message types. And then we'll pick some nice colors. So maybe for info, we can have blue. For debug, we can have, uh, let's say, green. Uh, for notices, uh, maybe we can have cyan. Uh, for warnings, I think probably yellow. And I think, I think that should be it. Just neaten up the formatting. So let's run this and we should have nicely coloured messages coming up in our paper trail log. Okay, so we have some errors. Um, so Serial also doesn't like converting from a uint8. So let's uh, do a quick cast there. So our sketch is compiled. Let's check the serial monitor to see if um, we're now getting messages coming through. So yep, yeah, it's logging to the serial monitor and on paper trail, let's see if our colors work. So there we go, we have a multicolored logging. So before you kind of use this code in production, I'd recommend putting out the paper trail logger to a separate file, so you can include it without having to include all the code. Um, I hope this was a useful demonstration of how to log to a remote system. Um, Paper Trail is just one of many different remote logging systems, so feel free to explore some of the alternatives. Um, I use Paper Trail because it's fairly simple to set up, and it's uh, a simple way of sending messages using UDP. So I hope this is interesting and if it was please hit the subscribe button and uh, there will be more videos coming and subscribing is the best way to uh, get notified when there's new content to look at. Uh, all this code is on GitHub, the, uh, the repo is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.